We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. Welcome to this high-level leaders track session. I'm Bianna Magbitang from the Philippines. I head the digital team of the ABS CBN News Channel, an English language cable news network in the Philippines. I also manage Asian programs for Climate Tracker. We are a nonprofit organization helping journalists to write better climate stories. It's a very humbling experience to actually be here, marrying both of the sectors. I'm very, very passionate about technology and sustainability. Coming from Glasgow, I guess the major takeaway I can say, like experiencing COP26, is that we really need to act now to secure a greener tomorrow. And there are so many models we can get in for inspiration from. So today, we will discuss the future of the world you live in. How do we create cities that are smarter, greener, more livable, and more efficient? And what is the role of technology in urban development? So I would like to invite all our panelists to please turn their cameras as we begin the session. Okay, so in no, in no particular order, I would like to welcome our speakers joining us from on-site. Mr. Peter Ochko, Deputy Minister of Industry and Trade of Czech Republic. Mr. Mario Skiba the Deputy Mayor of Katowice. Hello to everyone. Also joining us, Mr. Herr Baron, the Chief Technology Officer of the City of Amsterdam. And joining us online, um, Mr. Yuji Sasaki, Vice Minister for Policy of Co Coordination of Japan's Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications. Mr. David Jensen, Coordinator of the Digital Transformation Task Force of the United Nations Environment Program. He is also the co-champion of the Coalition for Digital Environment Sustainability, or CODES. And last but not the least, we have Ms. Marta Suarez, President of Dynamic Spectrum Alliance. We have quite a diverse and global panel with us. Welcome everyone, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon from where you're from. I know we don't have a lot of time here, so I'd like to begin. I'd like to ask our panelists to address this statement. Sustainable or smart cities should base their strategic plans on digitization, not only on existing best practices, but also on new innovative solutions. Let's begin with Mr. Yuji Sasaki of Japan. If you can, Mr. Yuji, if you can please unmute yourself. Oh, thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, Digital Garden City Nation Initiative, uh, which is a new policy in, uh, in the current, uh, uh, current uh, uh, administration, uh, aimed at uh, realizing sustainable and uh, inclusive society uh, with no one left behind by reducing the gaps between cities and rural areas through uh, prioritizing rural regions in digitalization. The plan for this uh, initiative is still under consideration, but we believe in addition to deploying digital solutions in regions, it will be important to improve regional digital infrastructure to facilitate capacity building of human resources with digital skills and to provide support to disadvantaged people such as elderly. And so we are already promised uh, promoting some projects in agriculture, construction, uh, construction and manufacturing sectors at local key industries. For example, in agriculture sector, uh, there are some smart agriculture projects using cultivation environment data, uh, geographical data, and robots such as drones, and automation of agricultural work through remote monitoring and control of 
tractors and other agricultural machines overcrossed uh, sorry overcrossed private 5G mobile network called local 5G network in construction sector uh, there is a project implementing a remote control of construction machine in dangerous construction sites in my manufacturing sector uh, we are working with uh, local small and medium-sized factories to achieve labor saving and quality imp improvement and uh, utilizing innovative solution with high definition video uh, ai image analysis and local 5g network to automate visual confirm confirmation of commercial products in the assembly and inspection process and to conduct a quality check remotely in addition to utilizing existing best practices we believe it is essential to implement innovative solutions uh, with a strategic plan to strengthen infrastructure development human resource capacity building and user literacy enhancement so that uh, everyone can achieve well-being by using digital technologies uh, wherever a she or he resides. Thank you. Thank you for that, Yuji. I'd like to call in Mr. David Jensen next. Sure. Thank you so much. This is a great question. And I really couldn't agree with it more. This is a huge challenge for, for big pu public sector institutions. I think path dependency and lock-in for specific digital uh, solutions is a really big problem we all face. We face this in UNEP, uh, the UN Environment Program. So let me just talk about how we're trying to address this challenge. I mean, there's three big, three big ways we're, we're trying to go forward. First, we have a fundamental commitment to agility and iterative solutions that are based on human-centered design and constant feedback, right? So trying to be as agile as possible, trying to always get feedback from users in everything we do and really being uh, agile is, is a fundamental principle that we're trying to take forward in the, in the organization. We're trying to avoid lock-in by also uh, committing to open data and open source uh, software solutions. So that's number one. Number two, we're really trying to ensure that the design of our products and services are interoperable, modular, and really future compatible. So that means we're trying to adopt this concept of a digital ecosystem for our products and services, which means they can be seamlessly interconnected and swapped out where needed. And we're trying to really avoid kind of dependence on a single solution, but really catalyzing this ecosystem of solutions. And then finally, uh, we're really trying to figure out, you know, how do we get to uh, more agile governance, right? How do we take faster decisions about new technologies to adopt? And one of the avenues we're exploring is moving to the point where regulations and international commitments themselves become code and that technologies can start to read these codes, take them into account and really optimize for the outcomes of those, of those laws and commitments. So how do we start to automate the, the application of laws and, and commitments in technology itself and, and have those work uh, to optimize for them. And I think all three of these issues, agility, um, interoperability, and really agile governance are, are fundamental to the core of what the IGF is all about. Thanks. Thank you for that, like catalyzing ecosystem of solutions and agile governance. Um, very good insight. How about you, Martha? Thank you so much, Ben, and thank you so much for this invitation. So um, I think from my perspective and, and taking into account the, the information of this panel, well, according to the United Nations e-government 2020, uh, most cities are underperforming when it comes to delivering online public services compared to national governments. And I think it's important, and I completely agree with the statement, that uh, cities focus on implementing innovative solutions. So that's, that's very, very important. And um, not only the part of innovative, but also the part about sustainability. Um, and and that, is, that is really, really key. So from the DSA perspective, what we believe is that, um, that there is a challenge in terms of implementing those new technologies. And one part of that challenge is bringing affordable connectivity. 
So um, I think we will cover more details about artificial intelligence, big data, IoT, but I would like to focus on, on two parts. One is access to augmented and virtual reality. And for that what that one, we will need affordable access. Um, and that could be, for example, consider using innovative solutions like uh, the new unlicensed opportunities with Wi-Fi, the new generations of Wi-Fi that is most affordable and massive. And also, I would like to refer to the importance of having um, competitions and rapid deployments that could be again, for Wi-Fi 6, for 5G and beyond. So in those cases, spectrum management is key and authorities should consider a way to avoid artificial scarcity, dedicating enough resources. And in that case also, spectrum sharing is, is very, very important. It's a key resource for more people to be connected and be online. And that is crucial for cities because that way you can make sure that the government and the public services are available for citizens. So my summary, it's like, Spectrum management is completely related to cities, even if sometimes we don't see that relationship. And new technologies, innovative technologies, uh, can be uh, brought by spectrum sharing. Thank you, Vina. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Martha. Affordable connectivity is really a challenge and crucial for, especially for developing countries. Now, may we have Mr. Peter Ochko, who's joining us on chat. Hi. Uh, greetings from Katowice. It's a real pleasure for me to be here. Uh, so, uh, a few words from uh, from the perspective of the Czech Republic on uh, uh, on uh, smart cities uh, and uh, sustainability. Uh, actually, this is a really important topic for, for us, uh, and uh, we try to, uh, uh, to to have a very complex approach to uh, to this topic. Uh, what what is clear that um, you will not achieve uh, your goals uh, only by uh, by digitalizing, uh, you or only uh, by uh, putting in place some particular solutions. You have uh, to have a really uh, holistic approach to to development of. Uh, of this concept. And uh, what is important, uh, as we see, and it was already mentioned, we uh, definitely need to develop the ecosystem, ecosystem of uh, of the local players and the state that uh, that helps to develop the, uh, the uh, digital uh, and uh, uh, environmentally friendly solutions. So actually in our uh, strategies, uh, uh, in our smart city strategy, but also in our 5G strategy in the Czech Republic, uh, we actually put a uh, big emphasis on creating uh, uh, ecosystems uh, in, uh, in uh, local communities. One of the concrete projects that we actually ha have in place is a project called 5G, uh, 5G Smart City. That is, I think, the best example how how uh, how to do it, actually. And uh, I think it's uh, really important uh, that we uh, that we are able to, in this project uh, to put together uh, the city, the the companies, uh, the technological companies, operators, uh, and. Um, uh, NGOs uh, that uh, co cooperate on uh, on uh, complex development of the city. Every of the ci uh, every city that uh, that is uh, in our project has to have uh, uh, really. Uh, complex uh, smart city strategy. It's not just about having some digital projects, but uh, 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 they have to have complex strategy, but they have to have also ability to co uh, to, to communicate uh, with, the, with the technological companies, with the operators. And uh, now in, in all the cities under our projects, we, we see a lot of use cases for the people uh, uh, in, uh, in free pillars. Uh, free pillars, and I think it's also important to mention the free pillars that we, we see important for this project, but, uh, uh, but also for the future. Uh, the first pillar is uh, people and communities. We really want to focus on, uh, on, on um, benefits for the people. We want to have a human-centric approach. So we try to f also focus on uh, digitally excluded localities uh, to, to address education, digital literacy, uh, uh, access to social and health services. This is first pillar. Second pillar is development of local economy. So um, uh, inclusion of uh, local businesses, um, actually employing the principles of circular economy, uh, new energy solutions so this is the second pillar and the third pillar is living environment um, and uh, it means that we want to deploy uh, solutions uh, in uh, 
for green communities, uh, for for innovative solutions for uh, I don't know waste management and so on. So uh, we have a, a, compl a very complex approach, and uh, uh, and um, uh, we will definitely support uh, the, um, the 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 new projects in this uh, ecosystem uh, way of uh, of support. Thank you so much. A human-centric and holistic approach. That's I think that's really something that we can all work on. We're also joined on side by Mr. Mario Skiba. Uh, uh, I would describe the self-government level from the from in Polish, if I if I can, of course. Także dzień dobry, witam wszystkich państwa bardzo serdecznie. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome everyone very cordially here in Katowice. We've just listened to some reflections uh, voiced from the uh, perspective of a central government, of the private sector, and I would like to focus on the local government level. On the local government level, the issue of innovation is something quite natural. Just as we would like to um, fly out into the outer space, we also promote innovation. And innovation is something quite natural, something indispensable for us at the local government level. And so for quite some time now, local governments have been operating just like private enterprises. We compare our works to those of other local governments and through the prism of the best practices, we seek the very best solutions. We want these solutions to be optimum in terms of their cost effectiveness, but also in terms of the satisfaction of the citizens. A number of issues come to play here, including the issue of the quality of life. In the strategic documents adopted by the city of Katowice, we keep emphasizing the issue of quality of life. We want to address the needs of our citizens, the residents of the city of Katowice who live here, who want to study here, who want to settle down and have um, their families here. And so we keep searching for innovative solutions that improve the quality of life. We would also like to make sure that our city is inclusive. We do not want to exclude anyone. We want to make sure that the greatest number of residents can participate in everything that the city has on offer. And for quite some time, we've been focusing on climate change as well. It is believed that climate change has been with us for a long time, but our civilization has been lagging behind, and so we now need to accelerate the pace of um, uh, change in order to mitigate climate change. That requires uh, the adoption of numerous legal solutions. And if I may give you some specific examples of what we do here in the city of Katowice, I'd like to say that what is important for us is the issue of transportation, the issue of mobility. Local governments in Poland since 2004, just like the local governments in the Czech Republic, well, Poland and the Czech Republic um, joined the European Union at the same time, and at that time we invested a lot in the development of the road network as well as the railway transportation. Uh, we have not met all of the needs, though. Despite the positive change, other changes, such as the negative urban sprawl, has meant that um, not everything has been uh, successful. And so we are now investing in more innovative projects aimed at easier um, navigation throughout the city, like the city of Katowice. We want to make transportation um, as convenient as possible for the residents. 
Two out of the five greatest uh, highways run through the city of Katowice. Uh, the traffic is enormous, and so this is a great challenge ahead of us. And so smart traffic management is a project that we will be um, involved in in the coming months. And we want to make sure that it's comfortable for the residents to, to navigate the city. As regards climate change, well, climate change is indeed very important for us. And we have invested a lot of resources in the development of infrastructure. But us, as representatives of the local government, we also need accurate information, accurate feedback on how the new infrastructure has uh, turned out. As you know, rainfall, droughts, uh, extreme weather changes, uh, all that has resulted in new challenges. So one of the Katowice-based companies has also been involved in a smart metering project. And uh, well, during, in the space of three minutes, uh, really, the mayor of Katowice is informed about some extreme weather changes. And so we know what the situation is along specific segments of the um, of the water uh, pipe network. And so we can now identify a number of uh, problems much more quickly. Speaking of the quality of life, uh, it is important to ensure that residents have access not just to digital technologies and the internet, but also to the green areas in the city. And so the so-called civic budget that is implemented in the city of Katowice ensure better and more equal access to green areas. In 2018, we were involved in a project in entitled um, Plant a Tree, and we planted a number of trees based on the preferences voiced by the residents. The residents are also very much involved in other uh, projects regarding uh, revitalized uh, brown fields in the city of Katowice. And so social inclusion, um, uh, the civic society activities are of utmost importance for us. We know that recently we've been impacted by high inflation, and so access to different goods has been limited, and we need to address these uh, sudden changes. And so in Katowice, we have uh, implemented quite an innovative solution entitled a, um, a, a social uh, store. And thanks to that, the residents of Katowice now have access to cheaper products. And a yet another challenge that we um, are trying to tackle is to ensure that there are more of such uh, uh, shops across the city for the residents not to be forced to travel across the city and to have access to cheaper products sold in those um, social cooperatives. We have also observed the rising energy prices. And so what has to be done is that energy efficiency is improved. And not just by means of thermo modernization, but also thanks to the ICT services that deliver the up-to-date information on energy efficiency. Representatives of the local government need to have access to such information. And just recently, we have implemented such a system. And so we know what the energy efficiency of the individual buildings in the city of Katowice is. So these are the types of initiatives that we've been undertaking in the city of Katowice. This is what creates the, 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 the potential of the city and the city authorities have a well have limited uh, resources to spend so really you need to inspect every penny 
um, uh, for a few times to make sure that the investment is smart. Thank you. Thank you so much for your insight, everyone. I think everyone talked about elevating the quality of life of their citizens through connectivity by making it affordable and organized. So what innovations and partnerships are introduced or can be introduced in terms of making the citizens' life better? How can different digital tools contribute to making cities set this even smarter? I'd like to go back to Deputy Mayor Steva. Okay. Uh, I think we. You talk, you should, okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you. Parę przykładów już tutaj podałem. I've already given you a few examples, but certainly the idea of a smart city is important. And just like the previous speaker has said, uh, there are many stakeholders who benefit from the smart city concept including city authorities for whom it is important that they have quick access to information. They need to know how different uh, services are implemented in this city. And so many local governments have access to different ICT uh, systems that are tailor-made to cater to different needs. But it's important that the different ICT systems are integrated. Uh, the ERP system that some of the local governments uh, have implemented for sure is um, something that facilitates the process. But what is happening in this city is also important from the perspective of the residents. And so I'm sure that all sorts of solutions that are aimed at improving the quality of life in our city um, are of utmost importance. And especially over the recent months during the COVID-19 pandemic, we have focused more on solutions that reach out into the future. We try to um, estimate the future of our city. We now reflect on how to design the city of Katowice in order to improve the quality of life of citizens in the future. And so there are different uh, forecasting tools that help us forecast the future of city transportation. For instance, the Visum system is a good example of uh, such a solution that helps us design the road network and the public transportation system so that it um, is effective. Speaking of transportation, speaking of public uh, transportation, we need to ensure that we have uh, feedback on how many people use buses and streetcars. And we do have such a system in place in Silesia. It is called Silesian Public Services Card. And that system, as soon as it is in place, um, it helps us um, gain access to information on how crowded the public uh, buses and streetcars are, and that helps us design the transportation network for the future, because we want to ensure that public transportation is available to the largest number of um, uh, residents. And so this is crucial information, and we need to have access to such information. From the point of view of city authorities, what is important for us is also uh, quick and easy access to information for the citizens. The citizens need to know how to navigate the city. And so this quick information system by means of text messages um, is in place in Katowice. And I think it has been working quite well. 
Uh, waste management is also important. We know that we have been producing more and more waste as uh, residents of cities. And so individual countries need to adopt waste management policies uh, that include waste segregation and municipal um, waste management enterprises have a role to play in terms of waste segregation, in terms of investing in innovative uh, solutions, because we would like to ensure that less waste ends up in landfills, and this way we can also mitigate climate change. Another important issue is uh, social participation in everything that takes place in the city. Based on the civic budget project, we have identified some of the important needs of our residents. In the beginning, the share of um, residents in the project was quite limited, but then it has changed. People can now vote for individual projects online, and thanks to the online voting system, the level of social participation is now much higher. And so these projects that are now implemented in the city have a stronger social mandate. These types of projects, or these types of tools, so to say, are certainly the future of local governments. And so we need to be able to manage the available resources efficiently. We are obliged to implement innovative solutions in a cost-effective manner. We want to avoid wasting the available resources. So I hope you can jump in next. Um, sorry, was uh, I was actually um, David. Hope you can jump in next in this. Sure. Thanks very much. I think um, one of the big partnerships that that we're working on right now in, in UNEP is what's called the, the Coalition for Digital Environmental Sustainability. That's Codes, and this is now part of the Secretary General's roadmap for digital cooperation. Uh, this is a multi-stakeholder group of around 800 people working on how do we bridge this uh, this gap between digital transformation and environmental sustainability. And, and one of the key themes we're looking at is how do we use digital technologies to increase individual agency to adopt more sustainable lifestyles and behaviors. So we understand that about seven out of 10 people, they want to be sustainable, right? They want to adopt sustainable lifestyles in their in their day-to-day -day, uh, lives. but actually only about three out of 10 actually do so, right? This is a big gap uh, between intention and action. So how do we use digital technologies to close this gap? And in particular, in the city environment. So I think the big call to action here is, is really talking to the digital platforms and getting them to adopt something like a sustainability by default as a core value and design principle. Um, so how do all the big platforms, we're talking Google, Amazon, Uber, how do all of them promote sustainable by default as a core value, as a core design principle, and really help amplify the adoption of sustainable lifestyles, products, and behaviors uh, at, a, at a planetary scale? I think that's the big question that we're trying to address in codes. I think the other big question on the table right now is linked to digital twins, right? Digital uh, twins of cities where different environmental variables and behaviors can be modeled and optimized. I think that's a, a really big question. Um, there are huge applications for digital twins and some of them were already talked about. Uh, decentralization of renewable energy, water management, waste management, transport. I think the key call to action within the digital twin landscape is adopting data standards and interoperability standards uh, to ensure that the wealth of data that's coming from these different sectors can be fully integrated into these digital twin models. And again, if it's a question of data and if it's a question of 
how that data is governed on the internet, then this is again one of those key issues that I think the IGF should be seized up. Thank you so much for that. Um, Martha, hope we can hear from you as well. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Mina. So um, I would like, like again to refer to the connectivity aspect. Um, and I think it's important for cities and, and in general to recognize how citizens are accessing the internet. Currently, more than 50% of the, of the citizens uh, connect online using Wi-Fi and uh, starting or ending by a Wi-Fi connection. And usually that is something that we give for granted. We assume that Wi-Fi is there. <laughs> and now with the, with the COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen that many people had to work from home and that then the traffic is constantly increasing. So uh, in this context, it's, um, and also uh, we, we just had the statements from Czech Republic and, and Poland uh, and, and Mayor of Katowice about how <clears throat> there, there are some goals in terms of 2030. And I, I think one of those digital target, targets, for example, in the case of Europe, is to provide one gigabit per second connection at households. And that all that can only be achieved if cities provide um, very good Wi-Fi connectivity and, and very good fixed and mobile broadband connectivity. So um, I, I think on that front, it's important if we, can, if we want to have a digitalization across society to take the decisions that will help that digitalization and that digital transformation process. And there are many actions that should be coordinated between municipalities and national governments and for example, one of them is to um, make sure that spectrum is given in the proper way. So it is, uh, there is enough resources for, to boost that innovation. In the case of um, virtual and augmented reality, there are so many applications to make cities smarter. For example, it would be very useful for tourism if you have those platforms for online uh, description, like to guide you, where should I go? Then you could have some guidance, not only with a message, but you could have also multimedia involved. And those applications, again, will need uh, more spectrum. And, and in that case, um, more spectrum for Wi-Fi would make, make it more affordable. And finally, it was also mentioned about the uh, green transition. I completely agree that that is very important. And again, on that, we should understand how people are accessing internet. So it's uh, sometimes it's greener to have a combination of fiber with Wi-Fi, especially for fixed locations, like uh, transport stations, like hospitals, like libraries. And then to combine that with mobile connectivity for outdoor environments. So my message here would be um, for authorities to think about how their citizens are getting online and to provide them with the tools they need in 2021 and that they will need in 2030. And that will go through a modernization of the networks and new technologies. So um, that, that would be my, my new sense. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you so much for those enlightening answers. I'm sure our audience right now are very inspired like me. So having said that, what do you think are the societal challenges when introducing the smart cities model? And what do you think are the measures that can actually be taken? Peter, what are your thoughts? Uh, yes, uh, actually what... Um uh, what I think is really important, I have already mentioned that, and I'm happy that many other people uh, have uh, also also touched that, uh, is uh, really to uh, to implement the multi-stakeholder approach, uh, to actually uh, involve uh, all the important players into into the game. Actually, uh, so so we had a lot about uh, about many many uh, activities in Katowice and uh, other other places, and um, I think um, um, and this is uh, this is also important uh, on the state level as well as on the municipal level. But the most important is that the both levels have to cooperate. That is why. 
why actually we in the Czech Republic we have uh, created uh, under the heading of um, uh, of 5G strategy of our 5G strategy um, uh, so called 5G alliance that is uh, really a multi stakeholder platform and actually 5G serves as um, as um, actually technology that uh, connects uh, connects all these stakeholders but the goals uh, are not just to develop the 5G or uh, to uh, to actually uh, bring uh, or uh, to to have a signal or uh, coverage uh, everywhere this is also important but uh, we really want to actually uh, develop the uh, the ecosystems in many areas we have five priorities five areas that we uh, that we develop one is uh, uh, focusing on uh, smart industry um, uh, Czech Republic is very industrial country it's very important but uh, one of the ideas under the smart industry heading is to actually um, bring uh, new technologies like 5G, like artificial intelligence, and to help uh, uh, to develop and to implement uh, the uh, the solutions that are greener, that are that uh, that are um, that are actually uh, under the uh, umbrella of uh, I don't know circular economy um, and. Um, Digital technologies can help. The second uh, uh, second heading uh, under uh, or second priority under our 5G alliance is focusing on smart city, uh, and we uh, try to be uh, working with the municipalities, with all the uh, main stakeholders uh, uh, in the area of municipalities, but also with uh, research organizations and bring the innovations uh, uh, in the, uh, into the digital solutions for the municipalities, for smart uh, smart cities, for smart regions. The third. Uh, Top, uh, third priority is focusing on security, cyber security. This is really important. Uh, everywhere where, uh, when you speak uh, about digitalization, you have to speak about uh, cyber security. Uh, the fourth, uh, fourth uh, uh, topic is focusing on education, on, uh, on uh, awareness raising. This is also very important um, because the citizens are sometimes not ready to actually adopt the technologies and to understand what we are planning. We, so we need uh, to educate and uh, and uh, raise the awareness and the uh, fifth uh, fifth uh, priority is very specific for the Czech, Czech Republic uh, so, so we are focusing on on uh, coverage uh, coverage along the, the main uh, the transport corridors and the cities uh, this is this is also important and maybe um, uh, maybe um, I will also react to what uh, what uh, Marta said actually uh, we also try to uh, partly to implement a, a dynamic uh, spectrum allocation uh, for for part of our uh, part of our 5G uh, spectrum, uh, it, uh, it's uh, I, uh, I would say an innovative concept. So we uh, we uh, we think this is one of the ways uh, how how we can actually give more uh, more flexibility uh, to companies, uh, industry, uh, and uh, also to cities and regions to actually uh, bring uh, bring uh, spectrum coverage and the new solutions. Uh, to the citizens. Thank you so much, Peter. How about in Japan, Yuji? Currently, we see challenges regarding utilization of data and digital technologies. In Japan, due to premature data literacy and high sensitivity on private protection, privacy protection, many people have concern for using data and digital technologies. A variety of concerns such as how their data will be used, how securely their data will be stored and processed, and how reliable the data on the internet are reliable, are giving re reluctance to business and individuals in fully utilizing data and digital technologies. Therefore, fostering trust in data and data technologies is critically important for full use of data and technologies. In order to address such challenges, the Japanese government elaborates a comprehensive data national strategy last June to advance in public-private collaboration toward a, a digital society where full use of data can be implemented. By strengthening trust through privacy protection and security measures, we are working to establish enabling uh, environment 
for data, uh, data flow and utilization, and to prepare user friendly data foundation and functions for data sharing. By uh, uh, synergizing, by synergizing such images and digital garden city nation initiative, uh, we will keep in advancing towards sustainable and inclusive society where everyone can enjoy well-being in daily life through better use of digital technologies and data anywhere in the country. Thank you. Thank you for that, Yuji. I'd actually like to ask more more questions, but I guess we're down to the last minutes of this session. So if I can just ask our panelists for final words or voluntary commitments. Can we start with the only female in the panel, Martha? Oh, thank you so much. Um, I think in terms of statements um, from, from the DSA and with different allies from different sectors like satellite industry, startups, SMEs, uh, we will continue giving this message about the importance of better connectivity through Wi-Fi. And also, uh, as DSA, we continue promoting spectrum sharing as a great opportunity for access in a different and innovative model extending the ecosystem with more stakeholders than the traditional ones and bringing uh, opportunities for different um, stakeholders like companies, enterprises, campuses to getting access to the spectrum and to be part of this connectivity challenge. So thank you so much and, and congratulations for this great panel. David, any final words? Thank you so much. I just wanted to reiterate this idea of a multi-stakeholder approach and how fundamental that is. And that's exactly what we're trying to do in codes now. So my commitment uh, through the codes network is, is to uh, release an action plan on the key priorities uh, for digital environmental sustainability uh, for the next uh, couple of years. And we commit to releasing that uh, in March, 2022. And that'll be based on this very wide multi-stakeholder engagement process, trying to define what the key priorities are, and then trying to catalyze action in 2022-2023. Thanks. Thank you, David. Peter, you also talk about the multi-stakeholder approach. Any parting words? Yeah, um, I really uh, definitely I fully agree with uh, with uh, supporting the multi stakeholder approach. But just just uh, one more thing I wanted to mention: we also need, uh, and I think this is important, uh, to uh, somehow secure that the citizens will not be scared of the new technologies. We see it uh, with 5G. We probably will see it with uh, artificial intelligence. We need uh, uh, need to uh, make sure that these technologies are secure, uh, that uh, there are no risks to health. There are no risks uh, in the sense of cybersecurity, but we need also educate people, uh, uh, actually raise the awareness about what these technologies, uh, uh, what, what they are and what they are not, that we have not to be scared. And uh, actually, we should actually show on the use cases, on pilot projects, how does it work, how these technologies help. Uh, for example, 5G can help to save lives. Uh, 5G can help to uh, to uh, do, uh, to bring uh, green, uh, green uh, solutions and so on. So I think uh, we need to uh, to communicate this is this is also something uh, this is my um, my message that we need to better communicate uh, what the co uh, new technologies bring thank you so much peter UG, you also talked about cybersecurity a while ago do you have any final words no, thank you uh, we learned some uh, commonalities and differences in connection uh, in connected city policies and urban digitalization policies between countries and cities. And uh, we will make use of the learning in our domestic policy discussion. And we are hosting IGF in 2023. And we will continue this consideration on connected city policy in our preparation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yuji. We go back on site. Marius, commitments, final words?
no, przygotowując się do tego spotkania, mieliśmy taki As I was preparing for this conference, I had this document that said that two thirds of the global population by the year 2050 would live in cities, and that really shows us that there will be mounting pressure on cities. We even have the term of the urban jungle, which is a concept that refers to an area where you can get lost, which is complex. And so if we want to talk about an urban jungle, we should, for example, think about greenery, because we want cities to be open, to be friendly to all of their residents. And so smart cities, new technologies, innovation, those that are already being implemented in cities, these ideas will be continued in future, and we really are looking forward to that. Here in Europe, we are also getting ready for the next EU financial perspective. And it is a challenge to really use the funding available to spend it on innovation that will bear fruit in uh, the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us in this very insightful session. Now we know that developing and creating smart cities that are connected, green, and inclusive is very possible. Thank you, everyone, in the panel today and to the team behind the Internet Governance Forum for making this happen. But I know that this doesn't end here. I hope to come back next year, hopefully on site, to hear about concrete and tangible progress that has been made by governments worldwide. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.